In this video, I want to introduce the, what I call, parent functions, or the toolkit functions as they're referred to in OpenStax College Algebra. To begin with, we have the constant function. Okay, and if you see from that graph, regardless of our input, regardless of our input, our output is fixed at a constant, which is why it's called a constant function. There is no change. Um, so f of x equals c, where c is a constant. All right. The next one, the linear function, the linear identity function, and that's a linear function, f of x equals x, where the input equals the output. That's why it's called the identity function. Input and the output are identical, and it is linear. Next, we have the absolute value function. The absolute value of a number, so for example, the absolute value of 6 is 6, the absolute value of negative 6 is also 6. Our inputs, regardless of what they are, they are positive because they're actually the distance from 0. So we have this V shape. If you can notice, from one side, it looks just like the identity function. That's why these are next to each other. And from one side, it looks just like the identity function. From the other side, it's actually the negative identity function. So let's... Uh, erase this and I'm going to really write the definition of this. Okay, the absolute value of x is equal to x as long as our x values are greater than or equal to 0 and negative x if x is less than 0. So from one side, okay, when x is greater than or equal to 0, we're equal to the identity function. However, we're equal to the opposite of the identity function on the left. All right. and you'll be familiar with these because we're going to work with them heavily in this chapter. Next, we have the quadratic function. f of x equals x squared. The best description of this is it has a U shape. Okay? It is a parabola is the official name for that. Okay? It's a parabola and it curves, it actually curves, it changes in a linear fashion. Okay, so the way the way that the second differences change is in a linear fashion. All right. Next, we've got the cubic function. f of x equals x cubed, and I should point out that the x squared and x cubed are considered power functions because they are just x to some power. Okay. Power functions are f of x equals x to the p, where that is our power. So anything in that form is a power function. But x cubed, okay, its third differences are in a are constant. Its third differences are constant, and that's why it is a we call it a cubic. Then we have the reciprocal function, f of x equals one over x. The big thing to notice here is that we have a symmetry going on across the line y equals negative x. Okay, going along this line here, we have symmetry. But possibly, possibly bigger than that, this function has an asymptote. Okay, it approaches infinity as you come to zero from either direction. And it has a horizontal asymptote in that it approaches zero going in either direction. And we'll talk about modifications on that function. Next, we have the reciprocal squared, which instead of 1 over x, it is 1 over x squared. There it is. Large difference there is that rather than the two ends going to positive and negative infinity at 0, these are both going towards positive infinity because anything squared is positive. Right, so we have, again, symmetry, but this time it's about the line x equals 0. Okay, the y-axis. Next we have the square root function, which if you notice looks very suspiciously like a quadratic on its side. It's actually the inverse of a quadratic, so we'll see that connection later. And last we have the cubic, or the cube root, which is the inverse of a x cubed. Okay. And that's actually our last toolkit or parent function, but we need to make sure we're very familiar with this. So come back and check this out 
um, every time you need to, as often as you need to, and become familiar with these.